You can lose a lot of money running Amazon PPC ads if you do not set up your campaigns the right way. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to teach and break down the exact step-by-step -step process that we use launching all of our campaigns for all of our products today, the specific settings that we're going to be using to run all of our campaigns so that you know that your campaigns are set up so that you can safely scale without losing a bunch of money on Amazon. Now, when I first started learning about Amazon PPC, I didn't know what I was doing. And because of that, we lost thousands and thousands of dollars. And it wasn't until we actually dove into it and started learning more about campaign structure and ways to control our spend where we started to flourish, where our brand started to do much better, where our PPC started to perform and using the exact same thing that we learned four or five years ago is still the exact way that we're using it today. So let's go ahead and let's dive right into it. All right, guys. So now that we are inside of our campaign manager here on Amazon, uh, you're going to be able to hop in here. I'm running these ads in the United States. Um, but if you're running them in Canada, this will still 100% apply. Um, but let's go ahead and just dive into things. So first and foremost, you'll see that the campaign types um, are all different. We have sponsored products, we have sponsored brand, we have sponsored display. Um, you can you know, see the scrolling in here where these actual ads are in fact going to be used. So you can see sponsored display gets around here, sponsored brands around here, so on and so forth. But for this specific video, we're actually going to be diving into sponsored products. Now, most of our ads, I would say 80, 90% of our ads, depending on the brand and how established it is, we're running sponsored product campaigns. So we're going to really dive into the structure that we use specifically to sponsored products, because I still believe that sponsored product is the best opportunity in growing your sales on Amazon, especially as a new seller. Let's go ahead and let's dive into it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dive in. I'm gonna click sponsored products here. All right, guys, so now that we are inside of the campaign manager here um, and I've created the campaign, um, you'll see a few different things. Um, the first section is ad groups. Um, so you can see ad groups, there's a naming convention that you can actually use here. Um, of course, we wanna add our product. So we're using our Voyage brand for this example here. Voyage is a brand that we've built as part of the Ecom Brand Builder Launchpad, basically a mastermind of us went in and dove in and we actually case studied everything that you guys need to know about us building and launching this product. So and really, really well, if you guys do want to see it, click the link down below and you guys can go ahead and take a look at this product on the Amazon storefront. So first and foremost, you're going to want to go ahead and actually add the product that you're looking to, uh, to launch the campaign for to your actual cart here. So you can see that it gets added over here. Now there's different perspectives around this, but if you have variations, you can add the multiple variations in here. For us, what we actually find the best is only having one ASIN per campaign and that keeps it clean it keeps it focused and then amazon can actually optimize specifically for that specific product now ad group name um, i always use a, a naming convention which is effectively we like to put in the SKU, the name the match type the date and then typically if you're launching multiple you're you know because you're going to be using like let's say i wanted to do an exact match campaign i'd likely have the same name um, I like to just use a number or a letter. So one, campaign one, campaign two, campaign three, so on and so forth. So for this example, because we are in fact launching it for this, you can see my naming convention is here. So the first thing I'm gonna do, like I mentioned, is I'm gonna put my SKU name. So my SKU name here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the campaign. So um, your campaign should be specific to your goal, right? If you are looking to uh, rank the product, you can go ahead and put ranking here. If you're looking to what we, we like to call uh, ranking campaigns, push campaigns, um, again, whatever works for you. Um, if you want to just call it manual, um, you can call it manual. Uh, but for this, let's say uh, for this example, we're going to go ahead and put ranking. And uh, the match type I'm going to put here is exact. Okay. Now, the example I'm also going to give you is most of the time when we are pushing um, keywords, you know, let's say I have a group, a group of 10 different keywords. I'm usually launching these keywords in all of my different match types. So I would be creating this exact same campaign just with a different match type. Therefore, I would go phrase. Um, now, phrases and broad matches aren't ranking campaigns. Exact matches are ranking campaigns. However, for this specific one, like let's say I wanted to use phrase, I would maybe call it discovery. That's what we'd like to put. Okay. Um, but again, I'm going to go ahead and put ranking and then phrase. Go ahead and put in your dates. Um, so you can put in the date today is 09, sorry, 0829. And then you would put in the year, of course, as well. Um, and that will give you the ability to do that. So 092924. Cool. And I'm going to copy and paste this because I actually just throw this as well inside of my campaign name as well. Um, and then again, I usually like to put in one. 
So a couple of ground rules uh, that I always like to mention. Number one, um, let's actually quickly talk about automatic targeting. Um, so I'm a big believer in only having one match type per campaign. And this gives you focus. This allows Amazon to optimize towards one match type and therefore it doesn't get too confused and the algorithm can start working towards optimizing that campaign naturally. So as you can see, when you set up automatic targeting, you'll see that it automatically goes to set default bid. Um, and what I want everybody to do when setting up auto campaigns is actually selecting this one here. Now the difference, as you can see here, is you can actually have all four of these match types at once. Now, the key when running auto campaigns is actually having one separate campaign for each of these match types. So I would go and launch one for close, I would launch one for loose, one for substitutes, and one for complements. But for the sake of the example, we're gonna go ahead and actually run a manual targeting campaign and specifically an exact match. So um, you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and select keyword targeting. If you wanna go product targeting or category targeting, um, you're gonna select this guy here. Um, but for this example, we're gonna go and run a keyword target campaign. And because we're running an exact match campaign as per our ranking, um, actually, this is, I called it phrase here, but I'm going to go ahead and swap that back to exact. Throw this back up in here. Boom. So it's an exact match campaign. I'm going to go ahead and unselect these three here. And then I'm going to go and enter my list of keywords. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, and I specifically always, always say, don't put more than five keywords in a campaign. And the reason why we wanna do this is because Amazon will optimize towards your best performing keywords in this campaign. If you go and put 100 keywords in here, the chance of Amazon actually spending all of the money on just one of those keywords is very likely and very high or a group of those keywords. But to hit all 100 of them, it's very, very unlikely. So a couple best practices here is keep the amount of keywords per campaign as five at the bare maximum. If you have a keyword that is really high in search volume and you're really trying to push organic rank for it, maybe you wanna do a campaign with only one. And my biggest tip for you guys here as well is when you guys are going and optimizing and reviewing these campaigns, if you realize that some of your campaigns is only getting spent to one keyword, don't be afraid to go and test these keywords in a new campaign and bringing these bids down. So the keyword that is getting all the spend in the specific campaign you are trying to optimize can actually go and flourish by itself. But you still wanna go and see if these ones will actually go and get any results. Um, so whenever you have keywords, you can go and click add keywords. Boom, just like that. I don't know, if, okay, it looks like it does go through. And then as you can see here, all of our bids are set up to this. Uh, so you can go suggested bid, you might have a strategy. Um, typically when we're running an exact ranking campaign, we're actually being pretty aggressive. Um, and I might go, you know, two to three times my suggested bid. So I might go $3, save this, and you can change these bids accordingly. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and go down here and let's talk a little bit about campaign bidding strategy because I think this is super, super important as well. So campaign bids up and down, Amazon basically in this particular scenario will optimize based off of their algorithm if you're more likely to convert at a higher bid or a lower bid. As you can see here, we'll raise bids by a maximum of 100%, meaning if you have your bid at a dollar, they'll increase it to $2 if they think that they can actually go and get that sale for you. Okay. Now I don't love actually using dynamic bids up and down as well as fixed bids. Fixed bids is, Hey, if I'm saying I'm going to bid a dollar, I'm only going to bid a dollar. And the reason why is because it's really hard to control profitability that way. Now, what I like to do is I actually like to use dynamic bids down only for all of my campaigns all of the time. The good thing with this is that you're actually setting a roof. So if I set my bid for $2, the maximum I can actually spend is $2. However, if Amazon thinks they can convert me at a lower price point or a lower cost per click, I should say, then they will actually bring that down. So this is a good way to be able to control spend. And at scale, it's a much easier thing to be able to control. Adjustment bids for placements, depending on your goals, you can play with these. So we have rest of search, we have top of search, meaning if you wanna show at the very top of your search, you can actually go ahead and increase that. So if I wanted to go 100%, you can see that an example bid of 56 uh, cents means that I'm willing to pay $1.12 for this. So top of search is something that we will play around with sometimes when we're launching campaigns, but many times we're actually just going aggressively 
on a higher bid as opposed to playing with top of search. Um, when you do get data and you're running your campaigns for quite a while, you'll be able to see your different placements. And if some of your placements are performing better in top of search, then you can start playing around with this as well. Uh, but for the sake of the example, I'm not going to set up any of these. Um, we have rest of search as well, as well, um, which is basically everything apart from top. And then we have product pages, which is showing up as a sponsored product. Um, so that will actually give you the ability to, you know, have a higher or more skin in the game specifically for product pages. All right. Um, campaign name, like I mentioned, we have our name in here. Uh, we have a start date. I like to put no end date and then uh, your budget. I like to say use what's comfortable, but for us, we like to go aggressive. Typically, we're putting in campaign budgets of $50. I know a lot of people that go $100 and then they make sure that they're optimizing for that. But I always do say if you're a beginner and you don't want to spend as much, you can control it a little bit here as well. Um, and there's also different strategies that you can use um, by setting a budget cap for the whole campaign um, and having a higher budget here so that you don't specifically spend, you know, more than X amount of dollars. Let's say you don't want to spend more than $100 in every single day. Um, but having a budget up here for $100 gives Amazon the cue like, hey, if this campaign's performing, go and spend a bunch of money. Whereas if you set a budget cap, a budget cap will actually restrict the whole account from spending more than that actual budget cap. So good ways for areas of control. And then from here, plain and simple, you're gonna go ahead and click launch campaign. And that is pretty much it. All right, so to take you guys a step further, and this will be the last thing we talk about, um, is if you do want to go ahead and actually use a budget cap for the day, you would set it up in here. So in settings, you can set up a budget cap. So again, by giving your budgets um, on the campaign level, meaning in the campaign that we just made really, really high, you're giving the cue to Amazon to be like, hey, again, if you're performing, go and spend money in here. However, if you don't want to go ahead and spend too much money in a day, you can actually put a cap. So let's say you had 10 campaigns that are all at $100, but you're telling Amazon, hey, I'm not willing to spend more than $200 you can actually set a $200 budget cap, meaning um, as soon as all of those campaigns collectively spend $200, it's going to actually shut off all the campaigns for the rest of the day. This is a good way to be able to control profitability. And it's actually a, a tactic that we like to use when we're scaling so that we can ensure that our organic rank pulls in a lot of our organic sales, therefore profitability increases overall. The other thing that I want you guys to take a look at here is the average daily budget increase as well. Um, you can see um, spend up to 25% more than the average daily budget using unspent budget amounts and then spend up 100% more. Typically for um, our accounts, I say 100%, but you can play around with this as much as you want. All right, guys, so that's exactly how you can set up your Amazon campaigns so that you can succeed and start scaling your brands and your products on Amazon. Hopefully this guide was super helpful and gave you the exact blueprint that you can use in your brand so that you can start scaling on Amazon with Amazon ads.